Mixing with Mike, plugin of the week is the Audified U73B version 2. This is an update uh, to the uh, U73B uh, that was released by Audified a while back. And uh, this adds some new features here and into uh, the existing uh, compressor limiter. And uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the history. So if you're not familiar with the original, it's an amazing emulation of uh, an old Telefunken compressor that goes back to the 1960s. And this is a, a Veramu compressor, so it's tube-based compression uh, in a similar way that the Fairchild is. Um, and it uses a lot of the same electronics as the Telefunken um, uh, V72 preamp. Uh, so a lot of the electronics are very similar, and then there's a tube compression circuit, which is kind of built in. The compressor itself is was originally a broadcast limiter, although it ended up getting used quite a lot in mastering work from the, through the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So, uh, so this is really like a, it's a very powerful uh, compressor. Really, really cool. It has like a lot of um, similar settings to what you find with limiters from that time where you have some uh, fixed release times and then you have a uh, program dependent release times. So it's kind of typical of like broadcast limiters. You see a similar type of setup with the Fairchild. Um, and essentially what you have is um, an on off switch here on the left. Uh, now there's some new features that are added in. So let me kind of focus in on some of this. So what we have is um, a menu bar up here that allows you to load in presets. It shows you your input output levels, which are adjusted here. Uh, you can set it to compression or limiting or bypass, right? So you get some different settings in there that you can make adjustments on. And um, you can um, also uh, set your release times. Now it shows up in German. So one of the actual um, things that they don't is put the um, user interface language you could set to English. So if you want, you could set it up that way. And essentially, so now it's compression limiting bypass, and then you have input output or gain reduction on your metering input output level. They added in a new feature, which is an auto uh, gain makeup, right? So if you're uh, working with it and you're having difficulties kind of matching the output, the auto gain, uh, auto match uh, does that pretty well. So auto gain control. Um, it also added in a feature uh, oversampling. So this is really cool. Um, with the oversampling, one of the things that it does is it kind of cleans up some of the artifacts that you quite often find with a lot of analog emulations. And so those artifacts more or less are from the harmonic distortion characteristics, which are very random. There's a lot of random energy. When you start to get into some quantization error that can sometimes add a bit of a fuzziness or a wispiness up on the top end. And sometimes that comes across as a nice smooth air, but sometimes it can pull down into upper mids and kind of become, add like an edginess to it. And so the oversampling is designed to help kind of smooth that out. And so that can be turned on here. Uh, you have to note that it does increase the CPU power. So if you're using it in a mastering situation, um, that probably is not an issue. If you're using it in a full mix, um, then you might find that you leave it off. And then when you bounce the mix offline, you could turn it on just for that extra quality. You could also set the uh, color of the display here. Um, you could set um, the, the setting here for calibration output if you always work at like a certain uh, DBFS um, uh, level. You could set it up over there and set that uh, calibration up. So you have some options here in addition to uh, links for updates and user manual and that sort of stuff. Now, um, when you get to it, the first thing that comes up is there's a high pass filter that at 100 hertz. This is actually on the audio signal. So, um, you know, the default uh, bring pull up of that is true to the original and the way that the original would that had it built into the compression circuit, but not into the limit circuit. And here they've given you the ability to take that out. Uh, and most of the time for most mastering or mixed job work, you will want to do that. The calibration setting is really cool. So this allows you to set the sort of standard uh, level standard that you're using within your DAW and kind of match it up so that um, when you're adjusting your input and output levels, it's relative to that. Um, so if you turn on this limiter and you see really, really, really heavy gain reduction, you might find yourself moving that number up, you know, uh, higher. And what that's doing is it's bringing that sort of, you know, your average level may be already really high or very compressed. Um, whereas if you're slipping it down this way, you can go all the way down to 
uh, calibration level of minus 24. So you get you get uh, you could set up your standard here and kind of operate from there uh, and kind of work. So it comes out as a default of nine because a lot of people in DAWs end up mixing pretty high. So let's let's pump some audio through it and and just get a sense of what it is. Uh, so we'll start with a 300 millisecond release. We'll start with a little bit of compression. Um, it's hard to gauge ratios. Um, because especially when you're doing like a true Veramu compression, compression or you know, optical compression, it's the components that actually the the actual um, uh, the actual ratio is not necessarily fixed. It will change based on input gain, and so it's you don't get hard numbers and stuff like that. So we can see here we're hitting this pretty hard. Maybe I'll put the auto gain on. That'll make my job a little bit easier. Yes, we're winning. I can also look at the input level here. It relatively looks low because of the uh, the standard I set here. So there's a real openness. In, in bigness that this kind of brings in that you can hear right away. Um, what I want to do is I want to bring this down a little bit and uh, play with some of the, the release times. One of the ways that I really like to use this limiter, and I use the U73B a lot, not the hardware, the actual, the first version of this. So this is uh, this is cool that it's updated also because I have a lot more experience with it using it on the mastering side of things that um, uh, I found some kind of unique settings and some things that you can kind of look for uh, when uh, using it on your mix bus, kind of the way that I'm doing it here. So one of the things I always play with is the calibration setting. So I, I typically find that I'm pushing it up this way uh, in mastering work, even though I think my average level is probably closer to like a minus 14 or somewhere in there as an operating level. Um, but that's just uh, the way it responds to the peak. One of the things that's unique about this, uh, by comparison to a lot of tube limiters, is that it's very fast for a Veramu limiter. Um, and that's like, because it has a feed forward chain where a lot of times there is a feedback uh, cycle on the gain reduction. So it's taking the output of the signal as it's passing through and feeds it back in to determine gain reduction. Um, and the feed forward circuit splits the input signal and, and that just becomes, the input signal becomes the trigger signal uh, for the gain reduction. And that ends up making it res more responsive. So I think that's a big part of what's going on. So you're, you're gonna hear more averaging and more brought in by the longer release times. And because it's on a mix, you're not you're not going to generally get like a um, a variation, uh, or what you're going to do is you're going to hear it a lot more in, there. You know, whereas in this case, in the beginning section, it was more like a pumping kind of thing. What we have is uh, three program uh, dependent release stages: uh, two point five, six, and ten. And That's 2.5. We are with full passion. We are everyday people that keep winning. See a bit less gain reduction there in the quieter section. So 
So one of the things in, in switching this um, and going through some of these program to release, one will be more responsive to the other. There's also a thing here where the 2.5 is giving you a little bit more game reduction. So I may want to tweak this up a little bit here. And um, so what the auto uh, is doing is it's adjusting the output gain at the same time that I'm adjusting the input gain. So I can balance that out a little So you can really hear like the the uh, the clarity, the openness, the richness, the way that it kind of solidifies the low end and and you know and the top end air on it. Very very cool, you know. Um, great emulation. It, it is pretty simple. Uh, I haven't experimented too much with the limiting mode, although if you really get aggressive with it, it can go up into the. Uh, one of the things about the uh, the limiting mode, I'll just say here, that this works. at a much higher threshold. So it's going to be more transient, responsive, and generally slower overall. In terms of the release characteristic. It's going to give you a little bit more of an aggressive um, attack, a little bit more of a stabilizing thing. Let me just uh, kind of switch this back over here. Where were we? I think we were at five. <laughs> So it has a it has a pretty amazing way of kind of opening up like you feel like the real size the up and down size the front back depth uh really open up with it and uh, generally the way that i've found it best to work and most of the time i use it in mastering situations with the program dependent release on a compressed mode and i'm usually going either you know 2.5 6 or 10 figuring out which one kind of plays and works best with that calibration control is really amazing way of kind of keeping um uh setting kind of a standard for the way that you work uh and then once you've got that if that's like your general overall levels or where you find it most responsive you could set that as the default that calibration as the default and open it up and of course you can store presets and all of that sort of stuff uh you can see here input and output levels high pass filter is not something that i use although that can be you know you can use that in certain situations where you want to filter things down a little bit on the low end so you get the quality of that circuit built into there and it's just a first order um um filter 60b per octave uh starting around 100 cycles so 
that's the basics of it. Really great one, though. Um, um, and some really cool features in particular. Well, let's see what happens here if I go to the oversampling. I have a, a pretty intensive mix here. Let's see if this helps at all. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. That was that was my thing. I have a pretty heavy load on the CPU on this, so there's not a lot of uh, room there for the extra. But that uh, you could do easily on the bounce, and that will help to kind of uh, add a little more focus and clarity to everything overall. So uh, really, really cool one, though. Um, and uh, I'm really digging this. I really love the other one. It's always um, uh, one that I've pulled out of the toolbox in many, many mastering situations. So these updates are really cool, and the sound and character of this is top-notch. Great stuff. So there you have it. That is the plugin of the week. Uh, it is the uh, Audified U73B version 2. Uh, this is a, um, an emulation of an old Telefunken U73B um, compressor limiter uh, built in the 1960s.